Okay, let's take some partial derivatives. Um, this is a kind of complicated looking function going on here. So to make this a little bit easier perhaps, what I'm going to do is I don't want to use the quotient rule anywhere along the way. So I notice that fraction in our second set of parentheses. I'm going to take the time real quick at the beginning here just to rewrite that with a negative exponent. That'll at least allow us to use a power rule along the way. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it's going to make my life a little bit easier, I think. Now I'm going to treat this as though we have two things multiplied together and use the product rule as we do these partial derivatives. So I'm going to treat this first set of parentheses as our g, and the second set of parentheses I'm going to call h. And mapping out how the product rule works, it's going to be g prime times h plus g times h prime. All right, so as we take the partial derivative with respect to x, we're going to treat x as though it's our only variable. And any y's that come along, we treat those as though they're numbers. So the partial with respect to x of g. Well, I notice we have an x squared, so that's going to be 2x as we take its derivative with respect to x. But then in either version here, we have a negative 5y squared. Well, we're going to treat that as though it's a number, a constant, right? Because we're, treat, we're doing the partial with respect to x right now. So if this is a constant, its derivative is going to be 0. So we could say 2x plus 0, but I'm going to leave that as 2x. Next, we want to copy down h, and you could use either version here. I'm going to use the one with the negative initially. Plus, we copy down g. So x squared minus 5y squared. Multiply it by the derivative of h. But you'll notice as we look over at h, whichever version you want to use, that's a constant because there are no x's. That's a constant because there are no x's. So the derivative of h is just going to be 0 in our case. So we're multiplying by 0. Well, anything that's multiplied by 0, like that big set of parentheses, is going to be 0. So really our answer we could say is 2x times, I'm going to rewrite this with the y back in the denominator, but it means the same thing. You could leave it with a negative exponent if you wanted to. All right, so that's our solution, the uh, partial derivative of f with respect to x. Next, let's find the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So again, I'm using that same product rule that we had up above. So we're going to take the derivative of g, this first set of parentheses in whichever version you want to look at it in. So the x squared, we're treating that as though it's a number, right? It's a constant because y is what we're focused on now. So x is a constant, so the derivative of this constant term is going to be 0. And then we have the second term. Well, we do have a y here, and we're taking the derivative with respect to y, so we're using the power rule. So to use the power rule, we're going to bring the exponent down in front, Bring the 2 down, multiply it by the 5, makes negative 10 in our case. Reduce the exponent by 1, so that'll be y to the first power. Next, we're going to multiply that by h. So 1 third y to the negative first power plus 4. Plus, we copy down g, x squared minus 5y squared, and multiply it by the derivative of h with respect to y. So this is where it's really handy to have that written with a negative exponent. We can move that, we can use the power rule, move the exponent down in front, multiply it by the one third, so we get negative one third. Reduce the exponent by one, so negative one minus one makes negative two. And then the derivative of the four is going to be zero. I'd probably leave our solution just like this for the partial derivative with respect to y. Hope this helps out. Take your time, map out what you're going to do, and really focus on which variable you're, you're treating as a variable as you go. Good luck.